All right, good morning, everyone. It is Monday morning. It is February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. I am sending lots of love your way. Thank you for joining me this morning. I hope you're all doing really well. And uh, we're going to jump right in. <clears throat> so in honor of Valentine's Day, I want to talk to you about love. <laughs> I want to talk to you a little bit about self-love, actually. And I think that we have to acknowledge how special we are in our own lives. And <clears throat> that might sound a little uh, strange for some of you, but it's so important for us to recognize how to love ourselves. And I think especially in recent times, it, you know, the world around us can be a challenge. And I think that the more we can support ourselves, the more grounded we can be to meet the challenges of everyday life. And um, <clears throat> Look, there's no other person quite like you. There's no other person as special as you are. And I think there's no better time than Valentine's Day for us to talk a little bit about self-love. And so I think that while um, we can get wrapped up in a holiday like today uh, with the chocolates and flowers and sharing our you know, love for the, our special partner, we need to put the focus back on ourselves <clears throat> and we need to really look at how special we are and how important we need to be in our own lives. And don't think for a minute that this is about being narcissistic or self-absorbed. Not at all. I think it's about getting in touch with who we really are. I think it's about getting in touch with ourselves. And I think it's about being really healthy and being grounded in our own well-being and happiness. And so I want to talk about some ways you can practice self-love and feel really good about it in the process. Uh, because remember, you're the most important person in your own life. And um, so here are some things you might want to jot down that we're going to run through this morning and really um, look at how we can add some of this into our daily practice. So take a deep breath. Acknowledge your own greatness in this world acknowledge all the things that make you unique and special, and let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is, um, or the first thing I want to uh, encourage you to do, I should say, is, is to do just what we did, is to start each day acknowledging ourselves and to, um, you know, spend some time with affirmations each morning that reflect around yourself. And so just telling yourself something positive about your strengths, your capabilities, your appearance, your energy, your personality, right? Can set the tone for your whole day. And um, I think it's also about acknowledging how well you're doing. So right now, just think of some area in your life that you're really winning and give yourself a little pat on the back because you being aware of that and acknowledging it sends a message to your subconscious that we're doing really well here, so let's keep going. And so I think that even just to acknowledge how well you're handling any given day is, is important, right? So anything that will make you smile. All right, the second thing that I think is important to talk about in terms of self-love is to, and, and I'm really becoming mindful of this in my own life, and it is to really respect your body and respect what you put into your body, right? And for you to think about the, the healthy foods you're eating, to think about how much uh, hydration you're getting and how are you nourishing the body because um, you have to live somewhere. And so that is a practice of self-love. And uh, I think that today is a great day for you to start really getting mindful about what goes into your body. The other uh, thing that you can do to practice self-love is to surround yourself with people who just radiate a positive energy, people that you love to spend time with, um, because they will reflect that, that love and positivity and happiness back to you. And I think that that creates a really encouraging environment for everybody. So think about who you spend the most time with and surround yourself with people who are gonna bring out the best in you. And surround yourself with people who are gonna encourage you to look for all those great things about yourself. And so conversely, I will say that to really practice self-love, it might be a time for you to examine any toxic relationships that might be in your world. And I know that this can be difficult and challenging. I've been through it myself. 
Um, but seriously, we only come through here once. And if there's anyone in your life who is making you feel less than, or is making you feel like you don't deserve great things in life, um, then they shouldn't really deserve to have a place in your life. And, and so I'll leave that there, but just examine any of those toxic relationships <clears throat> that you might have and how you can move them out of your way. Because when you move the negative and the toxic things out of your way, you open yourself up for more positive things to come in. So another way you can practice self-love is to really acknowledge uh, in a big way, the wins that you're having. I know I talked about that just a second ago, but really celebrating wins that you're having, you know, let's say in your career and speaking about that with your team and acknowledging how and why that's possible and how you'll continue to win. Um, you know, if you're working on some personal goals, create milestones within those goals that you can then celebrate, right? So if you're working on a weight loss goal, how will you celebrate each time you lose 10 pounds, right? Is it, is it something that you can go out and do that really anchors how great you feel around the win, right? And that's a great way to practice self-love. So this morning, it's Valentine's Day. We're talking about how to share love for the most important person in your life, which is you. And uh, just going through a couple of ways that you can really embody self-love and practice this and really feel good about that. Uh, because by putting yourself first, you're acknowledging that if you don't take care of you, uh, how will you really live a fulfilling life, right? So we have to, I think, get comfortable in our own skin and connect with who we are and embrace our greatness. And that's what we're talking about this morning. So in embracing your greatness, I think we also have to embrace how or what makes us different. And it's okay to be different. It's okay uh, for you to acknowledge some things that are unique about you. Maybe you have a unique laugh or you have a, a really funny way of approaching life through humor. Whatever it is, um, embrace what makes you you and stop trying to fit into someone else's mold because you were created in a divine way that makes you special and we should celebrate and acknowledge that, right? So that's important too. Another way to practice self-love is sometimes just to dial it down a little bit for you to be able to take some time out to be calm and to be mindful every day for you to breathe in and breathe out. Um, if you, if you need to, to start this practice, you might want to set an alarm on your phone and maybe every hour at the top of the hour, you um, just take two or three minutes and you just take a moment and you breathe in and you breathe out three times and you would be amazed how that's like giving yourself a big hug and how that will dial down a little bit of the nervous system and give you that opportunity to regroup, create mental focus and for you to be able to move into the next activity. So that's a great way for you to feel connected to yourself and really to connect spirit with body. Um, breathing, uh, deep breathing is uh, a great practice for you. <clears throat> so taking time out to calm the mind and the body. Okay, so another thing that I would recommend on your quest for self-love is to get clear about what sets your heart on fire. Write that down. What sets my heart on fire? And if you can follow your passion and you know that you can get excited about doing those things, you're living life at a really high energetic level, right? And so rather than wishing and, and thinking wistfully about the things you'd like to do one day, make one day today and start to find some small ways to line up with your passion and walk towards that every day. And be, because you deserve to have that kind of joy in your life, right? So what are your passions? <clears throat> and be patient with yourself in the process. You know what, that's a great way to show self-love in general is patience. <clears throat> patience for yourself, patience for the journey you're on, patience for the growth that you're experiencing, patience uh, around the mistakes or the missteps or the miscalculations that you have. And just really, I think being kind to yourself, <clears throat> excuse me, and knowing that 
It's about progress and not perfection. It's about progress, not perfection. So every day that you're growing, every day that you're making positive movements towards something fulfilling is, is really, is, is, is just a powerful catalyst to your growth. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think we have to acknowledge that. And I think we have to really, um, this whole concept of separating out progress from perfection. I think when we set out to be perfect, we set ourselves up to really feel stress and anxiety because what is perfect? I mean, what is the definition of perfect? How, how do we even strive for something like that? So instead, I think we have to strive for progress and we have to strive for knowing that each day we're getting better and better at who we are and what we do and that that should really be important enough for us, right? So be kind to yourself and really allow yourself to be patient with your own growth. All right, some other uh, ways that you can practice self-love. Reach out to the people you love and the people you care about more, more often because they make you feel good, <laughs> right? So carve out time to be with your friends, carve out time to talk to your family, carve out time to connect with the people who matter most to you and allow that exchange to fill your heart and to give you the, the new perspective, the new energy, right? That that can only bring you. So I think that it's important for us to know that we can connect to those around us. Another way for us to practice self-love is gratitude. We talk about that a lot here on Mojo. And I feel that gratitude is another way that we can acknowledge all the great things going on in our lives. And we can acknowledge all of the wonderful people around us. We can acknowledge the small things along with the big things. And that does so much to help us vibrate at a higher level. It's impossible to feel negative. When you're at that vibrational level and you're really grounded in gratitude, you can't feel negative. So that is another way that we can practice self-love because it's really about creating that energy around us, right? Because when we create that energy, when we really connect with our own happiness, our joy, our fulfillment, other things will fall into place. And that's what makes us more successful, right? And so I think that that you know, practice of daily gratitude is conditioning our mind to look for the positive rather than to focus on the negative because what you focus on is going to expand in your life. And so as a practice of self-love, how can you really be grateful for the people around you, for the, the clean sheets on your bed, for the hot water that comes out of the shower, for the abilities that you have and the progress you've made, right? The list can go on and on and on and on. So be grateful. Now, as you're listening to this this morning and maybe jotting down some ideas, I'm going to encourage you to go back and circle one, one thing that you want to put into practice today, because I know that, um, you know, your head can get, you know, you can be swimming with ideas and I want to make sure that you can execute this and really make it a practice in, in your daily life. All right, here's a big one, everybody. Ready? Take a deep breath. Here's how you can show yourself some self-love. Give up the need for everyone's approval. Give up the need for other people's approval because it is not what validates you. It is not what you need to be successful. You need to know clearly who you are, what your strengths are, what you're here to contribute to the world, what your passions are. You need to know that you are good enough that you have whatever you need to be successful or you'll be resourceful enough to find it. And you don't need other people's approval. And I have found in my own life that every time I have tried to work towards, you know, getting someone's approval, uh, it just really jacks me up and, and I can't show up as my authentic self. Because what I'm trying to do is fit someone else's mold or version of what I think they think I'm supposed to be. And at the end of the day, it is about being your authentic self. And when you show up as your authentic self, all of the right people are immediately attracted to you. You become a magnet for opportunity. And so there, there is a place to uh, look at how we meet goals and how we meet standards, how we meet performance. Um, 
uh, expectations and how we're accountable to all of that. But what I'm talking about is when you try to fit into some other mold that is not you, when you are doing things because you want someone else to validate you, you don't need a partner to validate you. You don't need a colleague or a boss to validate you. That comes from within. And so that is the number one way to show yourself self-love is to give up the need to be uh, accepted and validated by everyone around you. You don't need their approval. Okay, as we wind down this morning, a couple more. Um, here's one that I think is just fun. I think a great way to show self-love is to really, again, connect with the things that you're passionate with, passionate about, but connect with the things that you think are fun. Connect with the things that you think are fun. Be creative. Express yourself. I was at a small gathering yesterday for Super Bowl, and um, I get it. Depending on maybe your age or, of course, your, your musical preference, uh, you either loved or hated the halftime show. So I was the only one in the group who was loving it. I was loving it. I was trying to dance to it. And I wasn't afraid to be that person because it brought back a little bit of my youth. And I thought it was great. And that's OK. So be creative. Express yourself and do whatever it is. So if you love to paint, make time to paint. What did you used to do as a child that brought you joy, right? Is it, is it coloring, painting? Is it that kind of creative expression? Uh, is it being athletic and playing sports? So are you, are you doing those things as an adult? Do you enjoy music? Do you take the time to do things that just make you feel energized and that are fun? If you're not incorporating enough fun in your life, are you truly practicing self-love? So I think that that has to be on the list. And maybe today you're going to think about how that can show up on your calendar this week, right? So just have a good time, be yourself, let loose, and don't worry so much about how you look, just in, enjoy how you feel, right? All right, so last one this morning that I think is also very powerful is really get in touch with the inner dialogue going on up here. We are constantly thinking and talking to ourselves, right? Because our thoughts, we're eavesdropping on our own thoughts. And we talk to ourselves more than anyone else throughout the day. And when we can raise our awareness and be much more conscious of the inner dialogue and what we're saying to ourselves, we can make some adjustments. So if your inner dialogue or self-talk is anything less than loving and encouraging and supportive to yourself, it might be time to make a change, right? I mean, ask yourself, would you speak that way to your best friend or your child or your spouse? I, I can venture to say no. Uh, and we can be hard on ourselves. And so if we're constantly you know, negative and hard on ourselves, are we practicing self-love? And I think that, you know, again, we have to really get connected to the mind, body, and spirit and realize that those thoughts can stay with you. And those thoughts kind of are like Velcro, just like words that are spoken out loud. And, and so we're shaping our, our thinking and our thinking is really uh, shaping our behavior. And that's the results that we're getting. So if our negative self-talk creates feelings of anxiety or feelings of being less than or frustration, can we, can we perform at our best? And if you wouldn't talk that way to someone else, why do you treat yourself that way? Right. And so this journey to self-love is something that, you know, I understand well because I've done the work and I still do the work. And um, I've had my moments, certainly in my in my past of self-doubt, uh, self-criticism, having low self-esteem. And it's amazing when I changed my thinking and allowed that thinking to change how I feel. And I was able to really get rooted in who I am spiritually and who I was created to be, my entire world changed. And when you approach life with a sense of confidence, you're unstoppable. And that is not to be uh, ego filled, that is not being narcissistic. That is just being someone who is determined to live life fully. And when you live life at a full level, you contribute at a high level. 
I'm going to say that again. When you live life at a full level, you contribute at a high level. So don't think for a minute that your journey to self-love isn't going to impact people around you because it will. Your journey to self-love is going to make you a better partner, a better parent, a better coworker, a better friend, a better member of the community. And all that, all of that creates a ripple effect, right? And so that starts to change your world and the world of the people around you. And if we're all doing that, suddenly, you know, the world is a better place. And so it is so important for you to start today on Valentine's Day, practicing some self-love because it's going to change the way you feel. It may even change the way you look. And it's definitely going to change the the energy around you, which is going to open up so many doors of possibility. So I don't know if anyone has any thoughts or comments that are on here this morning on Zoom. I'm always uh, welcome to hear what your ahas are or takeaways. And uh, of course, I always try to stay connected to the people who are on uh, Facebook as well, if anyone has any comments. Any thoughts this morning before I let you go on to your day? morning, Anna. How are you? Hi, Erin. Good morning, my love. Happy Valentine's Day. Same to you. Um, what stood out to me out of what you said is about being patient with yourself, uh-huh. with the process, with everything that you're going through, just patience. I'm not, that's something that I need, you know, that, that is a struggle for me sometimes being patient with myself. Thank you for sharing that. I know, you know, that it may not always be easy to share those personal things, but you're not alone. We do, we do get impatient and frustrated. And I think, you know, frustration, just so all of you um, can understand a little bit more about this. Frustration is an intention not realized. Frustration is an intention not realized. So what that means is that there was something you intended and the outcome looked different. So you got frustrated with yourself or the situation. And so that could mean that we just have to practice adjusting a little bit of our vision and get clarity around that. Because sometimes things don't work out the way we plan. And and I think if we look back, a lot of times when it doesn't, it's okay because it's something other, you know, something else showed up or, you know, was a result of that, that was really great that we couldn't have um, foreseen. So thank you for for that. Because again, I, I know you're not alone. Anybody else have any thoughts this morning before we sign off? Okay, so listen, take some time today, practice some self-love, incorporate some of these new thoughts and activities into your routine. It's going to change your life, I promise you. It's going to change the energy around you. And uh, I really appreciate you always being here to join me on Monday mornings. I trust you get a lot of value out of this. So if you do, please share this Facebook page with anyone that you care about. Show some love today and let's grow our community. Love to see more people uh, come on to the Mojo uh, calls on on Monday mornings or just be a part of the community on Facebook. And the other thing I just want to remind everyone is I am doing a book club starting on March 8th. And uh, the book is The Happiness Advantage. And I'm really, can you see it? I know it's hard, there you go. Uh, It's um, really exciting because The Happiness Advantage is really about positive psychology. And basically it is understanding that when when you are working from a positive brain, that will fuel your success and your happiness in life. And a lot of people are programmed to think that when they achieve something, whatever it is, fill in the blank, they will become happier. And the reality is that the happier you become, right? The more we practice self-love, the more that we are anchored in our positive thoughts and approach life that way, uh, that the more success we achieve. And so we're going to talk about the principles in the book. There are seven. It's always about the foundation being um, taking action. Remember, it's not just thinking our way there. Um, But I'm very excited about this book club. So that's a free event. It's going to start on March 8th. It'll be, I believe it's Tuesdays four weeks starting March 8th at 1 p.m. Eastern. There's information about it on the Facebook page. Love to see you guys participate in that too. All right, everyone. I love you. Happy Valentine's Day. Have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.